Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Found Flicks. On this explained video, we're looking at the winner of our last viewer's choice poll, Circle, where 50 strangers find themselves trapped in a mysterious environment and forced to play a twisted game where they will have to decide which among them will die and ultimately elect the last person to live. But you know what we gotta do first, vote for our next viewer's choice ending explained. Your first choice is The Hole in the Ground, where a young boy disappears into the woods behind his family's rural home. When he returns, his behavior grows increasingly disturbing as his mother begins to believe the boy who returned may not be her son at all. And your second choice is the girl on the third floor, following a man trying to renovate a dilapidated house for his growing family, only to learn that the house has other plans, along with a sinister past that begins to slowly expose itself. Let me know which one you'd like to see me cover down in the comments below or by voting in the poll over in the community tab. Now, Circle is technically a science fiction horror film, considering the kind of alien invasion thing at the core and everything, going on, but it really utilizes this setup to eliminate and draw attention to many of the troublesome aspects of modern society and how people are treated, which considering the current climate is even more relevant than ever. This is the most successful side of the film, and it does a great job at exposing people's underlying prejudices and judgmental nature that comes out when the gloves are off and your life is on the line. It also makes it so you can't help but consider how you, the viewer, would act if forced into a similar scenario. I'd be like, this guy's sucks, shut up already, bye, zap! One intelligent way that they explore this is by not giving too many characters names. So you're forced to automatically go, oh, he's the one-armed guy, the black doctor lady, sweater vest dick, or whatever. And every time, I admittedly felt uncomfortable already, assigning names based on appearance alone. But this is certainly on purpose, and for the most part, the actual credits for the characters are the same. Little girl, pregnant girl, or whatever. They're actually less characters and more archetypes, stand-ins for the particular piece of society as a whole that they represent. And we see repeatedly how the characters instantly box in other people in particular ways based judged solely on the surface level, along with their own personal beliefs. This is what good sci-fi does, holds up a mirror to our broken society and exposes these faults through, in this case, an interstellar lens. Black Mirror certainly does this and the Twilight Zone as well. There's always a grander thematic concept the creators are trying to get across. So in this regard, Circle excels, but when it comes to the story and how things play out, it is a bit bare bones and straightforward, but still in the end leaves us going, huh, what was that all supposed to mean? Well, that's what we're here for today, folks, so let's check out Circle, breaking down the story and its bigger thoughts on society, as well as the reason and meaning behind who ends up surviving, along with explaining the ending and what the heck these aliens were up to anyway. Within a vast, dark room, 50 people are all gathered, and in a lengthy shot passing by them, appearing asleep or drugged, come to realize that this is a quite diverse group of people, all ages and ethnicities, and certainly walks of life. A younger woman is the first to wake, clearly having no idea where she is, spotting an ornate circular radius with dots under each person, and triangles leading to an ominous object in the middle. She tries to step off her circle, causing an alarm to activate, blaring until she steps back in place. Attempting to touch the dude next to her, she gets another alarm, as someone else pipes up telling her not to move, and that they they can see us, her still not understanding what's going on. A black machine rising from the middle of the room, and the game has officially begun. Another woman comes to yelling for John, and steps off her dot, immediately getting zapped to death by the machine in the middle. Dang, don't get off those dots, people! A chime rings out, followed by a much louder one, and overhead lights come on. Another black dude learns the hard way to follow the perimeters, stepping off the dot and instantly is killed. And a glowing circle appears on his hand and he's dragged out of the room by an invisible force. More chimes beep, some guy yelling to not lift their feet off the ground, another yelling out to not touch anyone. A loud pulsing is heard, the machine beginning to glow red inside, and another guy gets zapped. Everyone freaking out and talking at once, someone trying to get them to calm down. An Asian kid starts to try to figure out what's going on, moving his hand and playing with the pulses, seeing the triangles on the ground go around the group. When closing his hand, the triangle pointed at some lady, and she gets zapped. They're killing us, someone explains, but the kid realizes that they're actually voting, pointing out the light on the floor and how it moves when you move your hand. However, everyone can only see their individual vote triangle, making their choice unknown to everyone else, and concluding it's us choosing who dies. Another turn starts building up with the telltale chimes, and another person is zapped. Everyone is like, what happened? Someone must have voted for him, and convinces everyone to not vote. But the next turn comes regardless, seeing one dude is moving his hand, 
resulting in a lady getting killed. Already not following the rules, people, is not gonna go well. A shorter, red-haired girl understands that they're voting. Whoever gets the most votes is taken by the machine, so they quickly try to figure out a plan. Voting again for the woman that just died, another thinking that it won't work. But they all follow suit in voting for her, yet someone else gets zapped anyway. Well, so much for that. One dude admits that he accidentally chose the wrong person, resulting in whoever got the second most votes being killed. They attempt again to not vote, everyone keeping their hands flat and not closing them, which locks in their vote. Unsurprisingly, it's futile, all of the triangles lighting up, and a random lady gets done. So if they don't choose, the machine chooses on its own. A younger dude in a hoodie speaks up trying to formulate some kind of order and quiets everyone, wanting to go about this in a certain way. He approximates each round is about a minute or two, offering that they spend less time worrying about who's going to die, instead working on figuring out how to stop this. Someone else asking, what does he suggest? He singles out a few elderly people in the group in their 70s and 80s offering them up to go first to buy them some time. People are still a bit hesitant, but hey, they would be the next people to die in real life, so what's the difference? And they're like, okay, sounds fair. Six in total, buying them about 10 minutes. Again, someone calls out their plan, feeling that there has to be a better way. But when asking for suggestions, everyone is suspiciously quiet. And it's time to toast some elderlies. The first man pleading he has as much a right to live as any of them. The round counting down and he gets zapped. Well, too bad. Mom and Seeing here clearly for the first time, there is a young girl amongst the group. Oh, jeez. The Asian kid is like, anyone got any ideas? Positing that the soldier guy must know something, thinking it's an alien invasion or something along those lines. But the soldier swears he doesn't know anything more than anyone else here, asking the others about the last thing that they remember. A few share their last memories, most being stuck in traffic, trying to get out of the gridlocked town, even getting out of their car and starting to run. Then suddenly things went dark, the next round starting up. They continue trying to remember, considering that they were pulled into this ship by a tractor beam, someone else wondering if there are others in the same scenario as them. Another remembers being in a red room with tons of bodies piled on top of each other. He assumed that they were dead, but might have been unconscious like they were, concluding that they must have been drugged and woke up here. And another oldie is taken out. Someone else pipes up saying that he remembers the red room and saw the kid there, describing the aliens as big and black, dark green and wet, and even heard them speaking what he describes as almost sounding Chinese, everyone immediately calling him on his bullshit. Having foolishly drawn attention to himself, he realizes he's next to go, and desperately begs the other guy to admit that he saw them in the red room too, but he refuses to. Him getting more frantic as the round counts down, and guess what? You're done. They already quickly roasted their way through their first choices, so now they have to determine once again who's next, pointing out a lady in a hat, finding out that she's 52. Others are all, hey, we said 70 or 80, that's a pretty Pretty big difference. They ask why her hair is white, the woman admitting that she had cancer. Immediately pouncing on this, oh so you're gonna die anyway, her clarifying she's in remission and better now, considering that it could come back. A woman who is actually a doctor saying that that is not how it works. Oh well, so much for her who's next instead. A cop speaks up, pissed about the age thing, and just as before, drawing attention to yourself proves disastrous. On the next vote, he's chosen. They again, led by the soldier, try to work together to figure out what's going on here. The cancer survivor thinking that they were chosen for a reason, believing that if they try to learn more about each other, all of this will make more sense. A lady Beth volunteers, revealing her mundane history, which provides no substantial answers. And the vote comes, her chosen next. Once again, better to just keep your trap shut in this scenario, it seems. Julie Benz, here just called the wife, is all, oh, well, at least she didn't have kids, so it's not so bad. Others disagreeing as she's still a person, and decide maybe it's best to not use names, as the personal side makes the decision to kill even more difficult. Asking a black dude to go next, he's smart enough to not volunteer after what just happened, and another guy elects to speak up instead, introducing himself as Craig. Whoops, Craig, no names, remember dude? You're, you're done for. And says the reason he's speaking up is his wife is standing right next to him, and thinking it can't be a coincidence, asking if anyone else here knows each other. The doctor lady knows another man, stammering that they were co-workers, which hints at an affair or something that they don't care to divulge. Craig again pleads to spare his wife and instead vote for him, everyone taking this into consideration. The next to come under investigation is a Hispanic middle-aged dude, someone asking if he speaks English. When getting no answer, everyone's like, well, he's a goner. But the lady behind him speaks Spanish, called the translator, and talks to him, divulging that he has three kids. Others are already writing him off. If he can't contribute to the conversation,
conversation, they're wasting their time, right? Some jerk ass in a sweater vest and glasses gets her to ask if he's here illegally. Turns out he's not. Sweater man being all, yeah, right, he's probably hanging out in front of Home Depot trying to get work. I would have already picked this dick after this little outburst, but the boat goes off and a random woman suffers the machine's wrath instead. The cop thinks that he recognizes someone else, the tattooed man as he's called, remembering arresting him on charges of beating his girlfriend, defending himself that he was only 16. He does admit to beating his girl, saying the bitch got what she deserved. The cop feels his point is proven. They never learn and this dude is obviously next to go. Criminals, sorry, you beat your wife, you're not good enough for society, bye. Another woman called the pretty woman thinks that maybe the idea is that they're supposed to figure out who is good and bad amongst the group after the criminal thing, but there's too much gray area, the others say. And a strong out looking guy retorts that they're already deciding as a group who goes next, thinking they just want to see them kill each other. A long haired guy clarifying what she means is to determine who deserves to live rather than die. Based on what the soldier asks, you know, morals, values, what have you, what you have or haven't done in life as the machine revs up feeling they must be here to do something. Yeah, die as another lady goes down. The black guy considers, oh sure, you're gonna kill all the black people, right? The rich lawyer dick complaining about him playing the race card, that it's all chance and every man for himself, he suggests. The strung out guy yells nothing fair is going on here, looking to the other black guy, blaming him for taking things down into a racial direction. And that there are plenty of races that were already killed. They weren't even basing it on that, I understand. The doctor agreeing that once again by saying anything at all is putting a big old target on his back trying to get him to shut up. The Asian kid agreeing no one is counting Asians. The rich dude saying no one cares he's black and that this is all his personal feelings being put on display. The cop throws his personal feelings in the mix, facetiously telling everyone to feel bad for the black guy for struggling more than he did and goes on a pretty racist tirade declaring it social bullshit. Yeah, bye bye cop, zap. Well, these people true feelings about each other are really starting to bubble to the surface here. The soldier attempting to keep social prejudice out of this process, as it doesn't matter anymore anyway. Another saying, of course it does. And they're like, okay, all racist, please step forward. Not that simple. The soldier still trying to keep everyone working together as a team to play their game. They decide on a new tactic, forcing a tie. At first trying to vote for themselves, but the system won't allow it. Then everyone tries to vote for the person to their right. If done correctly, everyone should wind up with one vote a piece. The round counts down and another person is taken out, immediately realizing they screwed it up somehow, and try again. More carefully this time, one bearded man defies the order, seen forcing a tie, both him and the girl in a glowing tunnel of light. Everyone votes again and he's zapped. Already their plan totally upended. Well, this is not going well, society. You're blowing it. The other kid in a sweater, Luke apparently, admits that he changed his votes in the tiebreaker to the bearded guy since he saw him vote for the pregnant girl. They then try to consider what happens when they get to the last person left if you can't vote for yourself. Beardy thinking one must get to live and understands that it will most likely come down to the pregnant woman and little girl. And he wants to get rid of them now to give the others a better chance at surviving to the end. And hey, one would have to die anyway at some point, right? The vote comes to another tie between the little girl and another lady. The rich guy says to do nothing, but they know they have to decide. Strung out dude says it's too dangerous for both of them now as they've been exposed and the one-armed guy is annoyed lamenting, oh, she deserves to live because she hasn't heard of birth control. Regardless, the soldier feels they should be protected. The sweater dick questioning, how do we even know she's a good kid? And discovers she doesn't get good grades in school. Oh, well, then yeah, kill the little girl. B pluses, you useless kid. Bringing them back to choosing between the two. Another guy yelling to kill them both. And guess what? Makes himself an easy target to go next. The husband suggests to try something else, asking for people to volunteer to get voted on, which everyone thinks is nuts. And shockingly, no one offers themselves up to die, at least at first, until a younger kid called Sean makes the choice to volunteer. They want to know why, and the rich guy argues he's old enough to make his own decisions. But another sharply dressed gentleman steps in to go next, stepping off his platform and is killed. Well, they did buy them two minutes, but who's next now? Going back to Sean, the rich dick calling him a hero, and offering that he'll name his kid after him if he makes it out of here. As he steps off, 
off calling him by the wrong name Scott. What an absolute pair of assholes. The one-armed guy calling them out as they did know his name. Then everyone starts looking in the soldier's direction, and he's pissed by the assumption, as he was fighting in Afghanistan for two years, risking his life to keep them safe, and literally just got back two days ago, wanting to see his family and a 17-month-old child that he hasn't even met yet. The cancer lady and others declaring that they won't vote for him. Time running out and needing a volunteer, a woman raises her hand, divulging that her son died last year, some guy saying you'll see him again. And she buys right into his platitude, telling everyone she goes in peace and steps off her circle. The strung out guy mocks them for letting her die, but a minister agrees with what they said, that God is watching over us, just gotta have faith in his plan. Him rebuttaling to have faith in the machine, as it's their God now. He doesn't have too many supporters in his beliefs, the husband saying 95% of people believe in God. Him responding that they're all idiots, as the vote starts coming in, he yells, if there is a God, how would he let this be happening? Resulting in another tie between him and some random woman. She cries she didn't do anything wrong and gets blasted. The one-armed guy telling the atheist, looks like God just cut you a break. Yeah, for two minutes maybe. Obviously desperate, he attempts to turn the attention away from him, focusing in on the pretty lady, pretending that he recognizes her as a porn star, calling himself a huge fan. She's pissed, adamant that he's wrong, but he doesn't give up, asking if her breasts are real and who paid for them? Her employer, it turns out, and she admits her boss did, obviously having an affair with him, leaving her crying after this is brought to light. And the next round starts. Someone considers they should at least take into account if people have a family or a wife, the sweater dude claiming that he has seven children, others mocking him with more outrageous numbers, someone bringing up the reality that they all obviously have families, hurriedly asking the others about them having kids, the sweater guy moaning if they don't have kids then they should volunteer. The girl from the beginning randomly getting zapped. Hmm, okay, figured she'd have more to do since she was the first one introduced. Guess that doesn't matter in the circle. Without missing a beat, they continue their interviews, turning to a short-haired woman who, based on her charity work and other history, like raising her siblings with drugged out parents, is like the perfect person. They push her further, her finally revealing that she has a wife. Well, I have a feeling some of these ding-dongs will see that as an issue. The rich dude stepping right into this, asking if people want a kid raised by two women, admitting it's at least not as bad as two men, but not much better either deeming her a sinner. And maybe the actual point of the game, he says, is to pick the one person who is supposed to die and would end this nightmare. She's perturbed, as everyone literally is a sinner in some way. And like, really, the aliens want her to die because she's gay? Everyone votes, and fortunately, it's finally the rich dick's turn to die after pretty much hanging himself out to dry there with his outdated ideals. The husband thinks maybe he did have a point as far as the one they want dying ending this. The blonde guy thinking back to the concept of one making it out since you can't vote for yourself. What about when there's two left? That means you can only vote for the other person, which would be a tie. They then consider perhaps it would mean a sacrifice is required, meaning one doesn't vote and sacrifices themselves to save the other. The cancer lady wanted to pick someone they could trust to make this difficult decision to save one of them. The vote's coming to a tie between the doctor and her former lover. He dryly remarks she should never have married that asshole, both agreeing to go together and step off their circles at the same time. This proves as no one voted in the tiebreaker that their sacrifice idea doesn't work. The sweater guy declaring both the kid and pregnant lady can't live, so one has to go. Things starting to get heated as he's accused of just trying to save his own ass. Back to trying to decide, the sweater guy asks the pregnant lady what she does for a living. Another saying he's trying to start some class bullshit, but he defends himself that contribution to society is an important thing to consider, and berates her about her baby daddy and not being married. Where is he in prison? Jeez, man. I would have smoked this dude a couple rounds back at least, but it's the Asian kid who unceremoniously dies next. I don't even, what was that about? They turn the questioning on Sweater Guy, learning he works for a bank, lending money for people to start their own business and contributes to charity. A lady writing this off as easy to do when you make six figures. Then turning to her, we learn she's a psychology student. The one-armed guy asking, oh, so what do you do, collect welfare checks? Someone interrupting that they need some kind of overall metric to determine someone's worth here. Yeah, good luck luck with that gang. Uh, I'm sure you can figure that out in two minutes. And the psych student goes down. While we don't actually know who everyone is voting for, an obvious splinter is beginning to occur into two factions amongst the group. Luke on 
one side protecting the girls, while the blonde guy thinks this isn't going to work, and tries to get others on his side. He moves to Cancer Lady and the one-armed guy getting them on board with his cause, and tries to plead with the couple, asking for their help. But how, they ask? They know the other side will consistently vote for the girls every time, so by blocking their vote and getting the majority, they can stop them. The vote becoming another tiebreaker between the Hispanic guy and the girl, him choosing to sacrifice himself for her. The soldier calls Sweater Boy pathetic, him all, oh, I'm a bad guy for not wanting to die, the sides only getting further dug in, electing to keep targeting the girls to help them possibly get out alive. The blonde surfer dude agrees. They only need six votes on their side now, trying to get the others back on their side, the couple being their attention, telling the husband if he stays on the other side, he's basically sentencing his wife to death. Finally relenting to do what they want, the black guy agrees, stating that they're all equal. The soldier telling their side to vote for the sweater dick, while the surfer calls for three more, telling them to go for the kid. It's a tie for him and the girl, everyone confused as it means someone changed their vote, his wife sticking with helping the girls. She admits she just didn't vote the second time, and everyone tries to sway her again, as one is going to have to die eventually. The one guy is confident nobody is going to win and they're all going to die. Might as well go out with some dignity and maybe save two people instead. The surfer insists they just need to rip the band-aid off now, asking the pretty girl if she wants to live. She of course says yes, but doesn't want to kill the kid either. He's like, fine, vote for the one-armed guy then to buy them more time. And yep, he's zapped, evening out the votes amongst the splintered groups. The black guy tries to turn the tables, electing to start with the soldier, as if they lose their leader, the rest will cave. Cancer Lady asks what they can do, responding there's nothing she can do as they have the majority now. The soldier offering to vote for the wife, trying to get the husband to switch sides, sure that he won't vote for her. The time counting down, asking if he loves his wife or not, and everyone votes for the black guy just in the nick of time. Well, should have protected the girls, I guess. The surfer yells he just killed his wife, and at least he offered him a chance, considering the possibility that they're not even married, feeling it's just too random, and that they made it up to just get sympathy. They ask them some basic questions, like when they were married, but when simply being asked his name, which he did say earlier, Craig, the wife freezes up, him yelling, of course she knows my name, but doesn't want to play their games. Beardy suggesting they put them up for a tie. He cries, they did make it up, but blames her for the idea, her in turn blaming him. The vote goes down and Craig is donezo. She breaks down into a mess, Beardy goading her for crying, asking why. Her saying she has a husband and daughter, just not him. And he prods her further. Everyone else here has a family, he said, and you had no problem killing them, all clearly trying to lure her back to his side. They still have a chance if they can get her vote, offering to join their side, and promises to keep her alive. The soldier argues he's just trying to use her, asking if she wants to see her family, her shakily nodding in agreement. And there's one more dude who we've literally not even seen until now, asking whose side he's on and doesn't answer, him assuming he must be on his side. He turns to the lesbian, sorry that's literally what she's credited as, and her family, but she stays on the bearded dude's side, wanting to go for the army guy, others suggesting the cancer lady, resulting in a five-way tie. The pretty girl, lesbian, cancer lady, beardy, and the soldier. All getting roasted but beardy. Oh shit, that was pretty hardcore. Beardo checks in on the remaining survivors and another decides to step off, writing it off like, okay, so now it's three to three, no way to protect the girls now. Luke and beardy decide to do a deal, asking for one of them and offers the wife in trade, going for the deal and vote in order to trust him. The wife is freaking, but Beardy is confident, asking to just trust him, one by one putting out their hands, and the wife is offed. Well, so much for Beardy's promise. Bye bye, Julie Benz. After seeing him not vote, which upended their plan, Luke realizes the man must not have been voting this entire time, and has been hiding in the shadows, warning there's nowhere left to hide. The only reason he's survived so far is because he's been unwilling to participate. He offers they vote for him, and Beardy agrees. Maybe if they vote for him, this will all stop, he considers. The machine revs up, and Beardy realizes too late, whoops, shouldn't have trusted Luke. And it's his turn to get zapped. Of course, with dwindling numbers remaining, it's finally time for the other man to participate. Well, sort of, by it finally being his time and is taken out in the next vote, leaving only Luke and the two girls remaining. She wonders why they are doing this, him assuming it must be some kind of experiment to learn about us and see what 
we would do along with who is chosen and why to understand what we value and what we don't. By making us kill each other, she asks, but it's rather by killing them. By judging others, we're saying something is wrong with them. Wondering what to do now, he admits he doesn't know how to choose. But once he's gone, someone is going to have to take a step forward. Saying he can't decide for them, however, their time's starting to run out. Little girl cries that she'll go. Luke calls her brave and offers to go together. But he does a tricky wiki here. As the little girl steps off the circle, he votes for the pregnant woman, taking them both out, sighing in relief at being the last survivor. But the child kick back on, yelling isn't this what they wanted? Making the choice to kill each other? Congratulations, we're all assholes. Yeah, that's pretty much the takeaway here. Time's up, the light tunnel surrounding him, along with another on the pregnant lady. Apparently her unborn child is still alive. Well, that was unexpected. And he votes, the machine whirring to life one last time, cutting to black. And with that final selfish and heartless vote, Luke is officially the winner of the game. Coming to outside in what looks like the LA River, spotting several large spaceships hovering in the sky. Well, definitely aliens then, Starting to walk, he overhears previous comments that he made throughout the game about the last person standing getting to walk out alive and joins other people staring slack-jawed at a ship. Then hearing him saying about the girls having to decide for themselves and that he can't do it for them, concluding with it has to end this way. Right, so what were these aliens trying to do with this whole thing anyway? It certainly appears to be an invasion scenario. As a little that they do remember before being in the circle, they remark being trapped in throngs of traffic, probably trying to flee the invasion. And were randomly they and scooped up and taken aboard. And there are many other ships, so obviously there's more games going on than the one that we saw. The intent does seem to be an experiment into human nature itself. And through this deadly exercise, learn about the many facets of humans and what makes them who they are. Which as we know, ain't always a good thing, especially if it comes down to he or me. Humans are selfish by nature, as we saw time and time again in the circle. And ultimately the victor lied repeatedly to garner favor to save his own ass, turning with the tide as he saw fit to benefit himself. This being the reason that he won. He was willing to play along with the majority or what people thought was right, siding with the young and pregnant girls, but in fact, he didn't give a rat's ass about anybody else and even was willing to kill her unborn baby at the end there. So if it was about morals and blah, 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 and who deserves to live, you'd think the baby would be, you know, they haven't even done anything wrong in the world, but he doesn't care, he kills it anyway. The point being that the one who is the most conniving liar amongst the group, willing to do anything at others' expense, is in a sense the winner or most successful in our society. So, yep, by doing a good job pretending and being charismatic when necessary, this is the so-called best or winning human. Certainly sounding similar to how things are nowadays. The biggest cheats and weasels rise to the top, and it's because they truly only care about their own success and have literally no interest in helping others, as Luke repeatedly pretended to do for his own means. It also seems, as far as the aliens are concerned, that they're possibly using this as a form of population control control on Earth, and weeding out the weakest of the species, leaving only the winners of each circle behind. Morals, ethics, all that stuff, forget about it. It's all about being number one at all costs. Way to go, humans. You blew it again. With that, we have reached the conclusion of this explained video on Circle. While I could have used more on the science fiction aspect of the whole concept, overall it does admirably at what it is really setting out to do, making you think about how people truly behave in society. Even when I was watching this again for the video, I was like, dang, this is some exceptionally relevant stuff right now. And this was from 2015. I'm like, outside of the aliens, this is basically like peering into a window of today, right now, not some future dystopian thing, you know. The reality being our society has been fucked for quite some time, just perhaps even more so than ever nowadays. So, you know, don't be a dick to others. It's really not that hard, I promise. And stay safe out there, people. I mean, honestly, would anyone even be surprised if there was an alien invasion at this point? Oh, aliens. Yeah, sure. Why not? Jeez, what a year. Golly, I'll tell you what. What did you guys think of Circle and its ending? How would you have played the game? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Thanks for watching Found Flicks. See you next time.